How you doing, folks? Welcome back to the GM's Alcove. Got another review for you. This time, World War II Action Crossfire Company Level Rules. Uh, a set of rules originally came out back in the 1990s by Artie Conliffe. Uh, it's still available and still pretty much popular among World War II gamers. Very unique system that doesn't use rulers. Uh, no set turn sequence either. Very interesting. Uh, I originally did this review back in 2016. I've updated it for you guys, did a little editing, and I'll add my thoughts currently on the rules. So you know what? Let's jump into this and learn about Crossfire. Folks, got another review for you. This time we're going to World War II with a set of rules called Crossfire. Uh, company level World War II Wargaming uh, by Artie Conliffe. Uh, now, this set of rules were produced originally back in the mid-90s, I believe 1996. Uh, they have been reprinted, so you can still get these rules. Uh, uh, here in North America, I believe you can get them from On Military Matters. Uh, in addition, there is a, an official website. Put the link to that uh, in the description. But for the moment, let's get into the rules. Now, again, this is a reprint, so the quality of production isn't like the original. It's about, let me see, it's 44 pages of rules and organization and advanced rules uh, in total. And about half of this is actual rules. I think the first 19 pages is rules. Uh, the quality of production is pretty good. It's decent. What's to expected? These are somewhat semi-gloss pages. Pretty sturdy. They're not thin, so they're not going to tear on you. Uh, so yeah, it's about 40 plus pages. And the second half of the book, from page 20 on, is pretty much scenarios and organizations. Uh, basically army lists. Uh, let's take a look at the rules and see what's going on here. First up, uh, I should probably talk about uh, what numbers of figures you will need to play this game. Again, it's company level. Uh, however, its focus is on infantry. Uh, each base that you put on the tabletop is a squad. Unlike Flames of War, where a base is a team and two of them equals a squad, one base in this game equals a squad. Uh, the emphasis, again, is on infantry, not on vehicles. Your armor assets usually are in a support role. Uh, we start off with the basing. How Things are based and so on and so forth, and description of the various uh, troop types like commanders, company commanders, platoon commanders, what happens if they're killed, and so on and so forth. Now, what's unique about this set of rules is, is turn sequence. Uh, for one thing, it doesn't use tape measures, so you don't need any kind of measuring device uh, to play this game. That's something that's very unique to this set of rules. Uh, basically, movement in this game is from point to point, and the opposing player gets to react uh, to that movement. If he has a unit within line of sight of anywhere along that point to point movement, he can react by firing. Uh, and that's how it's a very interactive sequence of events. There's no fixed phases in a turn. Uh, and basically, it just goes back and forth like this. There really isn't a turn structure at all. Uh, once one side is hit, after moving like that, the turn shifts, and it's the opposing side's turn to actually do the same thing, and he starts to move stuff. Uh, you don't have to just move, you can also shoot, and as long as you don't fail in hitting something and causing a suppression or a kill, uh, you retain the initiative, as it's called. In other words, you keep uh, the turn on your side uh, and keep going until you get a failure and then it shifts back to the opponent. So it's very unique in the way the turn sequence works. Uh, very interesting. And again, because there's no rulers, there's no measuring ranges or movement distances, it's again, it's point to point. And because it's such a small scale level game, you're talking about uh, individual squads moving about, single vehicles moving around, Basically, there is no range to weapons. They basically fire anywhere on your tabletop. And if they're in line of sight, they're going to they're gonna have a chance of hitting you. And that's how that works. It does have rules for buildings uh, and cover and other such things, depressions in ground. And it goes into reactive fire, like I was describing there, where the, 
non-phasing, we'll call him, player, gets a chance to react uh, to the movements of the side with control of the turn, the phasing side. And uh, that's his chance. If he can hit you and suppress you, uh, he can steal the turn and start doing things with his units and moving around. Uh, it covers direct fire as well as indirect fire. Uh, also smoke. Now in this game you can also fire as groups or as individual units. Uh, usually if uh, individual squads are within a certain distance of each other, usually a base width, uh, they're able to fire as a group or possibly move together as a group. Uh, it allows you to get things done. And one powerful uh, mechanic in firing is what's called the crossfire. And it basically allows every squad in a platoon, no matter how far apart they are on the table, uh, to shoot at a single target. And usually a single target in this game is a single uh, squad of infantry or a single vehicle. It's basically how you shoot at things. So it's quite powerful having a bunch of things spread around the table shooting at one target. Uh, you're more likely to get a kill or a suppression or a pin. That's uh, basically the three effects shooting has in the game. There are pins, there are suppression, and finally there is a kill. And it's all based on the number of hits each individual shooter gets. And typically, infantry rolls three dice. Machine guns would roll four. Uh, and if there was any terrain penalties, like the opponent is hugging the ground or, or hiding behind some terrain, it's going to minus one from the number of dice rolled. And in this game, every five and six is a hit. One hit is a pin, two hits is a suppression, three hits or more is a kill. And again, that's from one single shooter. So even if you've got four squads shooting at a target, uh, they can't combine the number of hits together to equal, say, a suppression or a kill. It's each individual shooter has to get one, two, or three hits uh, to get the kill or the suppression or the pin. Multiple pins have no effect. Two suppressions will kill a target. Uh, and that's infantry targets, by the way. Uh, armor is a little bit different. You have to roll for accuracy and then penetration, you know, things you would expect. Uh, here we got Recon by Fire. It does have hidden deployment and movement, which is kind of fun in the game. You can uh, make ambush fire where a hidden unit fires on a moving enemy. Or Recon by Fire where you try and find out if something's hiding in the woods by firing on that area. Uh, it goes into indirect fire. There is off-table artillery in this game. Uh, some uh, indirect fire weapons such as mortars can be represented on the table as well. Uh, depending on how you select them for your force. It goes into close combat. Pretty much all or nothing. Uh, it's basically both sides roll their dice and apply modifiers. Highest roll destroys all the enemy it's in contact with. And again, it's uh, unit against unit. So you could have a squad going against a squad or a squad against two squads and so on. Uh, it's all or nothing. And your officers close by can help add modifiers to those melees. There's smoke screens and their effects in the game. It covers engineering and obstacles, mine laying, uh, anti-tank weapons such as bazookas, panzer shreks, and panzer uh, Here's rallying when you want to take off pins or suppression from a unit so you can keep doing things with them. And it's got a small section on vehicles. Now we're getting into the section on organizations, which is basically your army lists, as you can see here. Now it covers all the major uh, organ uh, nations in World War II, including the Pacific. So it's got Japanese in here as well. And basically, it has a point system. Uh, both sides will agree on a certain point value based on the size of game they want to play. They will pick a nation, pick a type of list to use. For instance, Germany, they got leg infantry from 39 to 42. Uh, they also have a leg infantry battalion of 43. Uh, as well as a motorized infantry battalion, an armored infantry battalion, armored infantry battalion of 43, and so on. So there's multiple lists for each nation, you engineer companies, and so on. And you pick them, and they're worth so many points. Uh, these basic lists tell you everything you get in your starting force. And on top of this, you will purchase bonus selections, like bonus units, extra vehicles, and so on. It's generally how you get vehicles, actually. 
uh, added to your basic force because again your your vehicles are kind of extras this focus here is on infantry you got the french which is nice you got the japanese uh, all kinds of lists in here russians different types of units and forces you can choose and they're like for instance typically battalion organizations like here's the u.s uh, here's an armored infantry battalion from 43 to 45. Uh, the headquarters unit includes all these including a priest jeeps m5 half tracks in addition, it gets three infantry companies, each of a company commander, uh, plus 57 millimeter anti-tank gun, and then it just goes into detail about everything. Little special notes uh, that pertain specifically to America, kind of like national characteristics uh, to the forces. Uh, then it goes into scenario generation. There's two basic scenarios to pick from here. Um, and like I was saying here, you got the point costs of the various things you can buy, and there's uh, the number of units that you can po maximum buy. Uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. And both sides buy their unit, their bonuses up to a certain point max. And there you go. And one side can be handicapped through this as well. Uh, going back to the scenarios, there's basically two of them. Uh, you got your meeting engagement and you got your uh, defensive uh, scenario as well. And you can build scenarios off of these two basic types. It covers victory conditions, uh, recommended force levels, like for a small game, one company. Mid-sized game, two companies. Large game, a full battalion. Uh, so there you go, folks. You can jump right into this. Now, another thing about this system of rules, and again, we got some advanced rules. There's plenty of illustrations of examples of play. Uh, you could learn to play this game in about half an hour, maybe, maybe even less, set up your stuff and start playing. And I recommend starting off with infantry actions. Don't worry about your vehicles and stuff. Uh, there is a supplement for this, which is a scenario book. It's called Hit the Dirt, uh, and it's full of scenarios for this set of rules. It also includes some extra rules like night fighting, which are not in this set of rules. Uh, so there it is, folks. 40 pages of good World War II action. Uh, I do recommend this set of rules uh, for a quick play game that focuses on infantry. If you like a fast playing set of rules, if you're not, if you're new to World War II gaming, or if you're not a big fan of World War II gaming but just want a little change of pace, this I do recommend. If you're looking for something with more depth to it. Uh, this might be a good start, but not something that will satisfy you in the long term in that sense. Uh, so that's it, folks. That's Crossfire. Very good set of rules. Very fun, innovative. Again, no rulers, no fixed game turns. Uh, check it out. And again, look in the description. Get access to the website and learn more about this unique game system. Uh, doesn't take long to play. Doesn't take many miniatures and you're right into the action. So there you go, folks. Crossfire rules and organizations for company-level World War II gaming. So there you go, folks. That's my look at Crossfire. Updated for 2020. Fantastic set of rules. I, I played these a number of times and always had a good time playing it. Very interactive when you're playing with a friend. Uh, good fun to play solo. Uh, it works with a, any basing system, really. I've played many games with Flames of War based figures, so you should have no trouble with that either. Look in the description, folks. You could find out where to pick up these rules, maybe even the supplement, and enjoy some World War II action on your tabletop. Great set of rules. Folks, like, share, comment. What do you think about Crossfire? What's your favorite set of company-level rules? Have you ever tried Crossfire? Fantastic game, folks. Leave me some comments. We'll see you next time, folks. Hang in there. It's only going to get better.